produced for the most part by Chicago noise rock king Steve Albini, in utero sounds nothing like a record made by millionaire rock stars, whatever the band member's current financial status may be. But what does the real world make of this album? Well, we took some copies to a college campus in New York City and asked some students for critical feedback. Here's the verdict. Are you a fan of Nirvana? Sure. Yes, I am. What do you like about them? Just the, the way that they're not the, into what everybody else is into. You know, they just sort of do their own thing. I respect that on anybody. Are you a Nirvana fan? Oh. Nirvana. Nirvana? Yeah. What's that? You've never heard of Nirvana? No, I haven't. No. What kind of music do you listen to? I usually listen to club music. Did you know that they have a new album out? Yeah, I do. I haven't heard it, though. Could you take this home and listen to it and then come back tomorrow at the same time and tell me what you think? Sure. All right. Yeah, no problem. Sure. I work here, so I'm here every day. I'd love to. Tell me, how did you like In Utero? Oh, it was great. It was really good. So uh, very similar to the first album. And I got a couple songs that I would be playing on the radio. It's going to be hits. Uh, third track, I think. Heart Shaped Box will probably be on MTV or something. And I liked uh, the ninth track, Penny Royal T, which I really thought was good. There are a couple songs that I could listen to and I enjoyed the, the music to. A lot of the lyrics I thought were just thrown in. I mean, I, it, they could have deeper meaning, and I tried to really analyze them. But some of these lyrics just seem like, I think if I was stoned when I, when I listened to it, I might have liked it better. But I don't do that anymore. I listened to some of it. The first couple of songs were pretty good. The fourth song, Rate Me, I was not too happy with that song. I found it kind of offensive. I prefer the beginning part of the album, especially Rate Me. It's great. Rape Me was just a, that's just like, uh, I think they just, they want controversy with that song, because all it is, it, it had no real meaning to it, I thought, other than it was just really uh, blatant and, and loud. Dumb was really good, uh, Rape Me was really good, and Hot Sheet Box was excellent. All of them had a high tempo, especially the beginning of the album, all of them were great. And then it mellowed out around the middle, and then at the, at the end it hypes you back up again. Perfect arrangement on it, also. Scentless Apprentice was good. I think they should open with Scentless Apprentice. Francis Farmer will have a revenge on Seattle was also good, but I don't know who Francis Farmer is. I think if I knew who Francis Farmer was or what that meant, I would have enjoyed it more. Would you recommend it to your friends? Sure, definitely. If they have the first album, they'll enjoy this one. It was pretty good. It's not what I usually listen to, but I'd listen to it again. Nirvana, buy it. Get it. Can I get another one? Good advice. Nirvana will be starting a U.S. tour next month. Do try to catch them. In Washington, meanwhile, the band out of court, with their faces currently gracing the covers of more than half a dozen magazines right now, Nirvana is back on the scene in a major way. The band's new album, In Utero, will debut at number one on next week's Billboard chart. And when the lads passed through New York City last week, they stopped by the MTV studios to talk about the record and to talk about some of the things fans have been saying about it on MTV News. And here they are. A lot of the lyrics I thought were just thrown in. I mean, I, it, they could have deeper meaning, and I tried to really analyze them. But some of these lyrics just seemed like, I think if I was stoned when I, when I listened to it, I might like it better. But I don't do that anymore. That's it. <laughs> I'm in college. It's target marketing. The first couple of songs were pretty good. The fourth song, Rate Me, I was not too happy with that song. I found it kind of offensive. anti, let me repeat that, anti-rape song. Um, I don't know, I just thought, I got tired of people thinking, trying to put too much meaning into my lyrics, you know, it's being too, uh, not making no sense, you know, so I decided uh, to be really blunt and bold. But we had an idea of a, of a sound that we've been wanting for a long time, you know because of Steve Albini's production from a lot of other bands like Breeders and the Pixies and stuff like that. It's just, it's just that sound that we really like and we thought that sound is so natural and real and it, had a, it has a really 
beautiful ambience to it. On the on a record, it says recorded by. It doesn't say produced by. That's well, an ethic. He's like. Mr. F. That's his thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but we gave him two million dollars. That's <laughs> true. Up until now, Kurt Cobain has been the musical force behind Nirvana, writing all the music and lyrics to their songs. But for the track Scentless Apprentice on their new album, all three members collaborated for the very first time. Is this a trend that will continue? Hell yes. It takes the pressure off of me. Um, Dave came up with the drum beat. And we just built the, the song off of the drum. And the riff, yeah. yeah. The, he came up with the drum beat, and then he showed me the riff, you know? And it was really simple, and, and we thought, well, this this could work. And, and I was thinking, mm, this is kind of bonehead. It's, you know, and then I thought, well, we'll work on it. And then and it turned out great. And now I'm excited about it, because now we can write together even more. Yeah. You know, we're really passive-aggressive people. I don't like to you know, complain to each other very often. And that's probably why we survived. We should go into the therapy, all of us. Sit down with this therapist. No we way. We should just bitch about each other in, in articles, you know, separately. Yeah, read the book. Yeah. <laughs> read the book, I know, yeah. Nirvana's authorized book, Come As You Are, filled with intimate details of the trio and their rise to the top, is just as revealing to the band as it is to their fans. I learned a lot from that book. Yeah, well, I learned back. a lot from almost, you know, the first two chapters, mm -hmm. but I should just shut up sometimes. <laughs> Nirvana, a great record, but you've got to see them live. The band will start a U.S. tour at the Arizona State Fair in Phoenix on October 18th, then move on to Albuquerque on the 19th, and will be coming soon to a venue, venue near you to try to catch them.